Okay, in this first question, I'm going to graph y equals 2x squared by transformation. The basic graph of y equals 2x squared is the bucket, which has these four key points. Um, when I see a timesing by 2, I think stretch. And because the timesing by 2 would happen after the squaring of my favourite number, let's say 10, I think you'd, you'd definitely go 10 squared and then double. Um, that means that this one is logical and vertical. After goes with logical and vertical. So I thought it would be a stretch and it is. So all these y coordinates are doubled in their height. I'm going to make them turn into um, uh, black circles. So currently one high, now two high. Currently zero high, two times zero is still zero. Still zero high. Currently four high. Currently um, eight high. Same with this one. So, oh, and currently one high. Currently two high. So that's the graph. When I connect those black circles, that will be the graph of two x squared. I'm now going to graph um, three times the square root of negative x. Now the basic shape for that is to, is indicated by these. Um, Red, um, cro red um, crosses, say. So that's the basic. Mm, I don't think you'll be able to see the red. Change it to purple. So these purple crosses. Okay, now whenever there's multiple changes, handle the ones that would, uh, would occur before the main function. If I had a number, I would certainly stick a negative on before I attempted to square root it. So, and then I would square root it and then I would triple it. So, the negative occurs before the square rooting and the 3 occurs after. The rule of thumb is handle the ones that occur before the main function first. So, what does a negative do? That It's a flip and because it's before the square rooting, it's a horizontal flip. So, these purple crosses are now going to become uh, purple circles. So, just flip them to the other side of the y-axis. I'm doing that because before ones are horizontal, just like after ones are vertical. So that stays there, that goes there, that goes straight to the other side of the y-axis. I'm now going to handle the 3, that would occur after the main function, so it's logical and vertical. Um, when I see times by 3, I think stretch, and because this is logical, it is a stretch, and it's a vertical stretch. So these um, uh, purple circles are going to become um, purple uh, dots, um, and they're going to be three times as high. Currently zero high, still zero high. Currently one high, now three high. Currently two high, now six high. And this is my final answer. My final answer for the black graph is this. This is me connecting the circles. Black circles. And now a follow-up question, you often get asked how many solutions there would there be to an equation and the way to answer that is to stick in, is to graph the two things and ask how many times they meet. So my black graph and my purple graph meet twice so there are two solutions. Okay, in um, this question, I'm going to graph this. The basic uh, function determining the shape is the squaring. So the basic shape for that is these four key dots. Now I've got two changes to the basic shape. It would have been x squared, but now it's 2x plus 1. Um, both of those changes would occur before the application of the main function. If I put my favourite number of 10 in there, I would go 2 times 10 first, then add 1, and then finally do the squaring. So both of these are before the application of the main function. When there is more than one change made, um, 
that would occur before the application of the main function, you must do them in reverse bod mass order. So just then, when I said I'd go 2 times the 10 and then add 1, the first change I'm going to handle is the thing that I said second then, namely the adding of the 1. So what does the adding of a 1 do? Well, when I see a plus 1, I think um, movement towards positives. However, because this was a before 1, it's illogical and horizontal. So it's not a movement towards positives, it's a movement towards negatives, and it's a horizontal movement towards negatives. So out of these black dots, I'm going to make the following black crosses. And um, now I'm going to handle the timesing by 2. Um, when I see a timesing by 2, I think stretch. Um, but because this is before, the squaring, it's illogical and horizontal, so it's not a stretch, it's a contraction and it's a horizontal contraction. So I'm going to halve all the y coordinates, all the x coordinates, thus creating these um, black circles. Current x coordinate 2, new x coordinate 1. Current x coordinate 0, half a 0, still 0. Current x coordinate negative 1, new x coordinate negative half. Current x coordinate negative 2, new x coordinate negative 1. Current x coordinate negative 3, new x coordinate negative um, one and a half and that when I connect those black circles um, that will be my graph of that now on the same set of axes I'm going to graph this um, the basic shape is 3 to the power of x um, I'm going to draw that with these um, purple dots that one has got three key points the exponential graph whenever the x is little and up high the y-intercept is always at 1 because um, anything to the power of 0 is 1. It also goes through 1, 3 because 3 to the power of 1 is 3. And it also goes through a third because 3 to the power of negative 1 is a third. So that's the basic graph for 3 to the power of x. If, if I drew it, there would be an asymptote along there. But I'm not going to draw that for the moment because it's a good piece of practice to always transform the key dots rather than the um, whole shape. Okay, so what do I do to that? I've got this doubling and then the addition of 1. Um, if my favourite number of um, 10 was in there, I'd go 3 to the power of 10, then I'd double, then I'd add 1. So both the 2 and the addition of the 1 are after the application of the main function. Therefore, um, they're both logical and vertical. When I see a timesing by 2, I think stretch. Um, and this is a stretch, and it's a vertical stretch stretch because it's logical, it's not the opposite of what we think, and it's vertical because that's what goes with the A. Um, so I'm going to double all the Y coordinates. Current Y coordinate 3, new Y coordinate 6. I'm going to make um, purple crosses out of these. Current Y coordinate 1, new Y coordinate 2. Current Y coordinate a third, new Y coordinate 2 thirds. And now I'm going to add the 1. When I see a plus 1, I think movement towards positives because it's after the powering. This is logical and vertical. It's and positives and logical and it's positives. So I'm going to take my um, purple crosses and turn them into purple circles. There is still 0. And then I had 1 added. So this is the asymptote. Okay, so the purple graph, which is connecting the circles, goes like this. And the black graph, which was um, the uh, black circles, goes like this. And therefore, um, we can estimate that the number of solutions to this equation, in other words, the number of places where those two graphs meet, will be just once, namely there. Um, a um, exponential graph gets um, higher faster. It has always has, pretty much always has a higher gradient than a um, squared graph. So therefore, I'm guessing that these are never going to meet. Um, but that is just a guess. Um, so therefore, my estimate is that there's uh, just one solution.
I'm going to graph this. Um, the basic shape on which it's built is the rooting graph and that has these key dots. Um, and it's got two changes made to it. The subtraction of 1 and the division by 2. If my favourite number of 10 was in there, I would subtract the 1, then I would square root, then I would divide by 2. Um, when there's multiple changes being made, some that which would occur before the application of the main function and some which would occur after, do the ones before the application of the main function first. So I'm going to handle this minus 1. Now, when I see a minus 1, I think movement towards negatives, so to the left or downwards. Um, but because it's before the application of the square rooting, it's illogical and horizontal, so it's not a movement towards negatives, it's a movement towards positives, and it's a horizontal movement towards positives. So from these black dots, I'm going to make um, black crosses. And now I'm going to handle the division by 2. When I see division by 2, I think contraction. And because this division by 2 would occur after the square rooting, it's it is a contraction because after ones are logical and vertical and it's a um, vertical contraction. So I'm going to take the y coordinates of these crosses and halve them. Current y coordinate 0, new y coordinate still 0. Current y coordinate 1, new y coordinate half. Current y coordinate 2, new coordinate, not y coordinate half. Now I've um, um, connected that um, because that's the final answer. Now I'm also going to graph negative x squared over 3. The basic shape for that is a bucket which I'll do with purple dots okay and um, if my favorite number was in there I would square it then let's say it was 10 I go 10 squared then I'd stick a negative on and then I would divide by 3. So both this negative and the 3 occur after the squaring um, and so um, therefore um, they should be done just in an order in which they come. Um, so first I'm going to handle the negative. Um, when it's after it's uh, logical and vertical. There's no such thing as a logical or illogical flip um, but it's certainly a vertical flip. So these um, purple dots are going to become purple crosses and now I'm going to handle the division by 3 when I see a division by 3 I think contraction and um, uh, because the division by 3 would occur after the squaring it's a vertical contraction so I'm going to take all the y-coordinates and divide them by 3 current y-coordinate 0, new y-coordinate still 0 current y-coordinate um, negative 1, new y coordinate, negative 3rd, current y coordinate, negative 4, new y coordinate, um, 1 and a 3rd, I think, yep, and so this is my final answer. So, if I had to estimate or judge the number of solutions to this equation. How many times do they meet? They meet no solutions. They meet no times. So there's no solutions because that graph just suddenly leaps out from the middle. That's part of the, part of the basic shape of the square root graph. Okay, in this next one, I'm going to graph Um, this. Now the basic graph is these fat dots. It would just suddenly leap out and go like that, but I won't fill it in until I'm ready. What changes would occur? If my favourite number was in there, first I would divide by 2, then I would add 1, the square root in, then I would subtract 1. Now, two of those would occur before the square root. You must do them in reverse bod mass order. So the first change I'm going to handle is that. When I see a plus one, I think movement towards positives. It's um, illogical because any changes made before the main function are illogical and horizontal. So I think it's movement towards positives, but it's not. It's movement towards negatives, and it's a horizontal movement towards negatives. So these all move one to the left, becoming black crosses. 
I now handle the division by two. That normally makes me think contraction, but because it's before the application of the square rooting, it's illogical and horizontal. So that is a um, not a contraction, but rather a stretch, and it's a horizontal stretch. So current y coordinate, current x coordinate three, new x coordinate six. Current x coordinate zero, new x coordinate still zero because zero times two is still current x coordinate negative one, new x coordinate negative um, two. Finally, finally, I'm going to handle this. The square root happened. Um, before this subtraction of the one, so this is an after one that's logical and vertical. When I see a subtraction of one, I think um, movement towards negatives, and it is a movement towards negatives um, because it's logical and it's vertical, so it's a movement down. So these um, uh, black circles are now going to become um, black squares. I'm moving them all down by one, and that's your final answer. I'm now going to graph x squared plus 1, that's nice and simple. Um, the basic graph for that is this fat, these fat dots. Um, there's one change here, it's after the main function so it's logical and vertical. Um, when I see a plus 1 I think movement towards positives and that's exactly what this is and it's a movement upwards rather than to the right producing these purple crosses. So there's the final graph for that. And um, therefore the number of solutions to the equation that comes from sticking an equal sign in between that and that is zero solutions because those graphs do not meet. I'm going to graph y equals 2x plus 1 cubed minus 1. The basic graph for a cubic shape is this. If I connected it, it would go like that. It would appear flat there, and then it would continue up like that for a snake. Three changes to make. The addition of the 1, the doubling, and the subtraction of 1. Um, if my favorite number of 10 was in there, I would add the 1, then I would do the cubing, then I'd double, then I'd take away 1. One of those three changes um, would occur before the cubing, so we do that first. Um, when I see a plus one, I think movement towards positives, but it's not, it's illogical, because that's what the ones that occur before the cubing are, and it's a horizontal movement towards negatives. So this, these fat dots move on to the left. Okay, now I'm gonna handle the um, doubling. Um, this is after the cubing now, so um, it's logical and vertical. When I see doubling, I think stretch, um, and it is a stretch because it's logical and it's a vertical stretch. Current x coordinate 1, new x coordinate 2. Current x coordinate 0, new x coordinate 0 because 2 times 0 is still 0. Current x coordinate negative 1, new x coordinate negative 2. Um, and then finally, when I subtract the 1, um, that's movement towards negatives, and because it's after the cubing, it's a vertical movement towards negatives. So these black circles now become these black squares and that's now ready to connect. Okay, I'm also going to graph um, this. The basic shape for that is um, indicated by these purple circles. Um, just one change is um, made there. It's a negative. Um, if I was my favorite number was in there, I put a negative on it and then square root it. So this is a before one, so it's horizontal. So these purple circles become these purple squares. They each move to the other side of the um, y-axis so that they can be a horizontal flip. Um, and that's the graph for that. These graphs enable me to do to guess how many solutions there would be to this equation. It's just the number of times they meet. So I'm judging that there would be one solution. Okay, now I'm gonna graph
I'm going to go f 2x minus 1 plus 1. The basic shape for an exponential is this. Um, if I drew it, there'd be an asymptote down here. That's too high because 2 to the power of 1 is 2. That's half high because 2 to the power of negative high, negative 1 is half. And these graphs always have a 1 to 1 because anything to the power of 0 is 1. Two changes here. Um, there is a minusing 1 there. If my favourite number of 10 was where x is, I would go 10 minus 1 and then I would put it on the power of 2. So that is a before 1. And then when the power of 2 power on the 2 was done, then I would add 1. So that's an after 1. We always do the before 1s first. So I'm going to handle this. It's before, so it's illogical and horizontal. I think movement towards negatives when I see a minus 1. This isn't. It's movement towards positives. And it's a horizontal to move, movement towards positives. So these all move to the right. And that is um, uh, that part handled. Now, this plus 1 would occur after the powering. So this is logical and it's vertical. They're all going to move up by 1, becoming these black circles. Now we also have to be careful with the asymptote. The asymptote used to be here. It got moved one to the right, so it's still along here. And then it got moved one up. So this is the final graph. I'm also on this set of axes going to graph um, this one. Y equals x plus one plus one. The basic graph for 1 over x is these. I've got six key points. I'll draw in purple. And um, if I drew it, there'd be asymptotes. And there. And also there. And there. Okay, but what do I do? Now, this addition of 1, um, if my favourite number was uh, tenth 1 and put it the 1, so before 1, um, it's put it into 11, then I 1, getting on that one. So before, that's, um, that one is therefore illogical. I think it's movement towards positives when I see a plus one. It's not. It's movement towards negatives. So that goes there, 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 and that goes there. Now I'm going to handle this. Um, that's after the dividing into the number ones. So that's logical. So everything moves up by one. That black cross now becomes this purple circle. That black cross becomes this purple circle. That black cross becomes this, so that purple cross becomes that purple circle that purple cross becomes that purple circle that purple cross becomes that purple circle and that purple cross becomes that purple circle what happened to the asymptotes? the asymptotes used to be there and there they each got um, moved one to the left and then one up so there they are there So the graph is this. And um, therefore I can judge that the number of solutions to the equation that comes from sticking an equal sign in between those would be one solution because those two graphs meet just once. I'm going to graph this. The 1 over x graph has these key fat dots. And there's two changes here. There's the fact that there's a 2 over the x instead of a 1 over x and there's the fact that there's a negative there. Now, um, these are a bit tricky to think about. Um, I usually think of them as 2 times 1 over x and then with the negative on them. But it really doesn't matter whether you put the negative on them because you've probably learnt from experience that negatives can either be at the front of a fraction, below a fraction or at the top. It really doesn't matter. But anyway, I'm going to handle the, the timesing by 2 first. Um, if I had my favourite number of 10, I'd go 10 into the 1 and then I would double. So this is an after 1. So it's logical and vertical when I see do times by 2, I think stretch. Because it's after, it's logical and vertical, I think it's a stretch, and it is. It's a vertical stretch, so I'm going to double these y-coordinates, making these black crosses. 
and now I'm going to handle the negative um, that's after the main function as well um, and uh, so I'm going to um, do a vertical flip but if you make a mistake on this um, and think that that negative would occur before the application of the main function it actually doesn't matter because this graph has a certain type of symmetry if you do a horizontal flip you get the same answer because if that goes there it'll be the same as when that goes there so it really doesn't matter so in any case so right now I'm going to do the flips creating the black circles that goes there that goes there that goes down there that goes there that goes there and that goes there um, the y intercepts were sorry the in asymptotes were the x-axis and the y-axis they're still the asymptotes so here is the final black graph Um, okay, I'm also going to graph y equals negative x plus 4, negative 1 over x plus 4. Starts with the same um, basic dots. They get flipped, so that will go... there, that will go there, and that will go there. that will go there, that will go there, and that will go there. Again, it doesn't matter if you mix up the horizontal and vertical because you get the same answer anyway. And now I'm going to add 4. Um, the addition of 4 would occur long after the division of your favourite number into the number 1. So this is definitely an after 1, so it's logical and vertical because that's what the after 1s are. So I think it's a movement towards positives, and it is because it's logical and it's a movement um, up by 4. So half to get to the x-axis, 3.5 still. 1 to get to the x-axis, another 3. 2 to get to the x-axis, another 2. 1.5 above the x-axis, so it'll finish 4.5 above the x-axis. 1 above the x-axis, it'll finish 5 above the x-axis. 2 above the x-axis, it'll finish 6 above the x-axis. The asymptotes used to be there and there. You move them up, the vertical one will be unchanged, and the horizontal one to one will be 4 higher than it otherwise would be. Okay, so how many solutions would there be to an equation which stuck an equal sign in between those two graphs? I'm very sure that that will not meet that. Um, I'm not entirely sure how I can be so sure. Um, I'm relatively confident that that won't intersect with that, um, but I'm not sure. So I would guess that there'd be no solutions, but um, I'm... I'm far from sure, that is definitely just a guess.